Hey, good morning, folks. Mike and I are down here at Riceville Beach this morning. Um, it's um, early October. We're participating in Redfish Action's Inshore Classic, Inshore Classic Open. And uh, it's a Redfish tournament. This is the first one of its kind here in Riceville Beach. So we've got uh, quite a few boats back behind us leaving right now. We're departing. We just checked out. And we're going to head back to our home waters about uh, 60 miles uh, north of here and, uh, and try to find our redfish for the day. So stay tuned for some action today. See if we can get on, get on these fish in the surf today. All right, folks, uh, today we also have a, another camera crew with uh, Captain Rennie Clark, Hurricane Drew, Arden. Uh, I think, I believe they're going to be fishing up our way also, but it's going to be an exciting day on the water. We're going for ocean rays today. We're going to be, <laughs> we're going to have some bent rods and sore arms by the, by the got, end of the day. We've got the weather for today. We've been waiting for this. We've been waiting for it. It's going to be awesome. We've been looking at schools of hundreds, hundreds, and sometimes thousands of reds. So if we get some, if we, we luck out and everything works out today, we're going to have some incredible action today. you got to stay tuned, okay? right here in a foot of water just outside this inlet here. See where they went. They're right there. Mike's got one on already. Shut that down. I got the trolling motor. Mike, those were big reds too right there. What size is he? He's uh, like about 26 inches. Well, he's it in. I know I've said it before, but Mike, I love my job. <laughs> oh, about 24 inches. What size is yours? About 24. Mine's got a little head to him here, so. What should be? A little too big. He doesn't want to be caught today, does he? Big oh, boy. I got him. That was the whole school. They did. They came all the way down here. Come all the way down here. Smoker. Straighten that motor up when you get a chance. Gotcha. You don't have one too big on it, do you? <laughs> Good possibility. God. Mine look pretty big from here too. Close. Probably too big, but he's close. He don't look too big to me. He's looking pretty good. This guy's a little large right here. I'm right in him. I'm sitting here looking at him going by right here. That was way off. The entire place right here is head to head red. Look at all of them everywhere. Look at him right there in that wave. <laughs> you got him on. Gotta love it. Twenty-six. He's fat. They're staying right here too, look. They're not going anywhere. They're pointing every direction. Back behind the boat right there. You know, on an average day you just can't get out here and do this. You gotta be real careful out here, you know. Today is really calm, and you can still, if you get the boat in the wrong spot, you can still lay, you know, lay the boat up on top of the shoals, and you don't have to flip a boat to get in trouble out here. One good wave, and you fill her up, and 
and then just wave after wave keeps on pounding inside the boat. So we haven't had that happen yet. About 15 years of doing this, but it can happen any day to anybody. We've seen it happen to a lot of people. People get so excited because they see so many fish they've never seen before. And then they just forget about where they're at. He looks close. He looks pretty close. He's skinny though. See that fish versus that other one? No length on him, you know? He's 26 and a quarter. Nope. One of one in the front is 26 and 5 eighths. And this one's skinny, so I'm gonna let him go. Look at the bait shower. Off them reds. <laughs> Yeah, it's like they don't want to go down the beach any further. I can tell you right now, there's no finer red fishing ever than this day. We got two, three thousand fish right here, non-stop, every single cast. Yeah, I got an over slot here. Too big. My name's Captain Rennie Clark. I'm a tournament trail charters out of Wilmington, North Carolina. And my partner is Hurricane Drew Arndt. And we're here fishing the Inshore Classic Open in Wrightsville Beach, but we're not actually in Wrightsville Beach. So we're gonna try to get on some redfish here in the uh, surf today and probably pop back inside, maybe get a couple redfish on top. But um, hopefully we'll get them early. Um, the sun's getting up. As soon as the sun gets up a little higher, we'll be able to see these schools of fish. Look at them right here in front. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Let's go ahead and fish. I'll get him. Nice fish. Right. Nice fish to start the day. I don't think he's going to win the tournament for us, but you never know. So what we got is culling tags for tournaments. It's just actually, uh, you just they're easier to pick up at the live well and replace them. And then we've got a a culling beam or a balance beam that once we get two fish in the well, we'll pick out whichever one is the smallest and just let that that fish go. The easiest way to do it is stick them in these tags. And so you can pick them up like this. Also helps it weigh in. Put this down. Stick it in the well. Just looking for a school of fish now. We were on them earlier and now they've moved, so trying to catch up with them. These fish move so fast down the beaches. These fish are a lot grayer than what we're used to seeing. They just don't have much color out here in the ocean. Um, these fish will change white, silverish color, uh, kind of like a mullet out here on the beach with this white sand. Inshore with a little bit of tannic water and that, the mud flash we usually fish, these fish will be what we call lit up. They'll be bright orange or red or copper color and they're a lot, a lot different color than they are out here. Usually you'll see a dark spot out here. That'll be a school of fish or you'll see them in the waves. It'll be, the top half will be gray. They're pretty easy to see once the sun gets up higher. But it's still, it's def definitely a different color fish than what we're used to catching inshore. Um, what we're doing today, we just do part of the year when our fish move off of the flats inshore this time of year when the mullet and the shrimp come out of the inlets, we'll come out here and do this shoal fishing. But um, this is not what we usually do. We're usually fishing in 18 inches or less of water, poling, using a trolling motor, um, pitching baits to single fish with weighted hooks. We rarely use a jig head, any kind of weight. Uh, a lot of times we're using weightless baits. Um, so, Drew, I think we got action right here, brother. It's a little one, too. It's a slot, though. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> a little one. That's 27, dude. <laughs> Another good fish. Just keep your eye on that school, bro. Yeah, they're right over to the right of my, my fish. North. This is the beefiest rod I got in the boat. That's a big fish, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's a 30 inch fish right there. Big old nasty right there. Fun fishing, that's the size you want. 
tournament ain't doing you no good. Maybe I'll get a smaller one. This is a DLA bait buster. You throwing the DLA? Yeah. They're coming back right. They're just circling. They're happy out there. Alright, there's some small ones right there. Nub. Wrong color. Hey, I just throw it in there. Let, let it, it sit. It back. It's not like a regular bug. It just snaps into place. They're like 40 bucks. You're cheap. You can get them on eBay. You hit the hit the button and it just stays. So uh, that's why it's just so much easier than a regular bug to deal with. Topwater frog. Old froggy. This is a freshwater skitter walk that I replaced the split rings with 60 pound owner split rings it really doesn't matter I guess but just like owner split rings and also I put a sure set hook on the back to dip the tail end of the bait down a little bit in the water if you look at that bait in the water it's snubbing me the butt sticks down therefore this underbite on this fish he can hit that bait a lot easier by just coming up and sucking it down whereas a level flotation plug he has a hard time with because of his mouth see his bottom lips a lot shorter than his nose, unlike a bass that has a longer bottom lip than the nose. It's just harder for him to hit top water. Look at him hitting that bait. Look at him hitting that bait. Man, look at that. Watch this, as soon as my bait hits the water. Oh my gosh. Look at this, stupid stuff. As soon as it hits the water, man. He's too big. Yeah, we just moved from uh, another part of the beach where we were on about two to 3,000 fish that had kind of wadded up together. There were several schools that came together and four or five boats were down the beach working these fish away from us and then everybody kind of came together because the schools ran into each other and they all became one big school. So we decided to leave those fish alone, try to go find some bigger fish. We cruised down on the other side of the inlet, found a pot of fish. They were in they were in some sloppy water, so and they didn't look to be the right size. So we're gonna head on up the beach, see if we can't find some pigs up here. I don't think I reached them. Might not. Look at them right on the beach back there where you're at. Back it up a little bit. You come back here. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. We can just about put an anchor out here now. Yeah. A little guy, don't you? Twenty-six and three-quarter. Is he? Yeah. He's got a little belly on him too, look. Yeah. Balance him against that one in the bow. We're gonna be some tired pumps after today. That's a nice fish right there. He's right there. Hey, you know? You kidding me? He didn't want to come in the boat, did he? 26. I got a big shoulder fish here, bud. How big is that one? He was 26. He's got oh, shoulders on See, that's the difference. That's a nice fish. Real fat. Four, six and three quarters. We had to balance him. Yeah, you take him up, balance him, I'll get on a fish. Folks, we just had a big massive red school. There's some over here on this side of the boat too. Same like the over here. They're exploding on them glassmiths that just come down the beach. See all the heads out of the water? Exploding oh, in there. Oh man, look at that. <laughs> They're tearing up the glassmiths. He's got them cornered. Look at them in the white water just exploding in That was not a good time to be a bait, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Andrew, you're trying to follow yours. Got South Carolina fish. Big boy. 
<laughs> yeah. That's a big one there. <laughs> About uh, 30 inch, 31 inches. Probably 12, 13, 12, 13 pounds. We're in the right school of fish here. We can pull some big ones out of here. He's back in there. He's just way offshore. 11 pounds. I got That's a nice fish right there. I don't know if he's got shoulders or not. Turn that thing off. Oh, he's got a little shoulder too, doesn't it? Oh, wow. A little bit of shoulders on him now. Come on. I'll be over. Nope. 26. You need to weigh him against that one that bow. You got my dig here. Hold on. Uh, We gotta get off the beach here. It's like some finder gigging out here. Huh? You can go finder gigging out here. Yeah. <laughs> Chase my plug out here to the boat. I'd catch one if I wanted to. I was just playing with him. Watch this one. Catch one immediately here. Boom. Hold on, guys. Hold on. Look at him. We got him on. That anchor shifted a little bit when we went inshore. Put us in a rod holder for me. I had to get this boat out just a hair. Since we stopped this morning, come around to come out the inlet, we've been catching drum the entire day. And it's almost 2.30. We have a good probably hour and 20 minute run back. So we're gonna get these two fish in and we're gonna pick up and make our run back. Right now we we have one that's a solid 26 and 15 sixteenths and another one about the same. And they're nice big fat fish. We weed through what, 100 fish today easily? Right out, hold it, probably. Yeah, call it easily 100 fish. There's probably been a good 20, 20 boats out here fishing on these fish today. That's a good fish right there. Yeah, I got him. Might be barely over, but he's close. We probably threw back 20 in between 26 and a half and 27 and a quarter. Probably 25. But there you go. There's another one. Another perfect fish right there. And there again, we can't stress how <laughs> dangerous this is really with your boat and hearing these breakers. We took a good probably four footer over the side, even with our experience, you know, it caught us off guard and well, put about a a good 12 inches of water in this boat. R&D fishing team, where's Hurricane Drew Art and Captain Rennie Clark? $352 for you guys, and they're second place in the uh, PWT, but that doesn't pay anything, just so great that it's second place. And uh, I got some plaques for you guys. Team Fluger, Captain John Owens and Jeremiah Hieronymus.
guys, along with your check for second place to $440 from Redfish Action for Inshore Classic Open. Uh, Ron Enslin from Ranger Post presents you with a check for $250. All right, these guys are no stranger to first place. NC Charter Fishing, 14.54 pound. These guys uh, won the regular series championship for the Redfish Action Challenge this year, our series champions. Uh, Captain Jeff Cronk and Captain Mike Taylor, uh, $704. Congratulations. Also, uh, because they're in a Ranger boat, and they've also captured the, the first place for the Ranger event, the um, $250 from Ron Enslin. Guys, thank you for supporting our events. Good luck at down in uh, Florida.